Hi everyone, I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary and this is Boreth, one of my Morelia Bradley. Welcome to Corn Snake Corral for Thursday, November 24th, 2022. Happy Thanksgiving for anyone who celebrates that. And even if you don't celebrate an actual Thanksgiving holiday, we should all be thankful for something. I am thankful for my snakes and other animals. And yes, I realize Boreth is not a corn snake, and this is an episode of Corn Snake Corral, but he is who is out. He free roams my office and the rest of my house quite frequently, and my corn snakes don't for reasons that I will go into in this episode. We're gonna try a training session with my Korean rat snake. His name is Sargon, and the taxonomic designation is a Lape Anamala. When I originally got Sargon, he was sold to me as a Russian rat snake, the Lafe Shrinkyai, but it became apparent as he got older that that isn't what he is. And if you'd like to learn more about Russian rat snakes, Korean rat snakes, and Japanese rat snakes, Reptiles and Research did a really great podcast episode, which includes YouTube video footage where Liam Sinclair interviewed Francis Koskieri about these species. And it's so detailed and there is so much great information that I really recommend that you watch that. When I originally started the corn snake corral series, I just considered calling it corn snakes and company because I have a few random species that are similar to corn snakes, related to corn snakes, or at one time were in a similar taxonomic designation as corn snakes, and this is one of them. The Korean rat snake is a Lafe anamala, and the corn snake used to be a Lafe guttata guttata, I believe. It's now Panthropus guttatus. So this uh, Korean rat snake is similar to corn snakes in many, many ways. The behavior is very similar. The size is very similar. You see that it doesn't take him long at all to eat that. Now granted, I'm giving him small mice right now because I'm gonna do more than one target training session. But even bigger meals, they eat quite quickly. And so they're very exuberant as you can see as well. He's really good at target training, but he has a little issue with impulse control. And now he's tail rattling because he's getting really, really excited. They love to climb. He's in a three by a 18 by 18 exoterra right now. And he absolutely spends a ton of time climbing up on these branches. This corner piece is actually his old terrarium that he grew up in when he was a tiny, tiny baby. And I took the top and the door off and I put it in here. So now it's another climbing feature for him. He will shift in and out. I'm not doing that tonight. But what I was getting to about their higher metabolism and how quickly they eat is that I do have to clean his enclosure, it seems, much more often than I do some of the other snakes. He eliminates more often. In other words, he is producing urates and feces a lot more often than some of my other snakes. So I have to do more enclosure maintenance with him. And he's quite friendly when he comes out and he's not eating and I'm handling him. I don't have any issues with him biting or striking at me. I have to clean his water quite frequently. I have to give him water quite frequently. He does like to get in his water as well as drink quite a bit of water. He has a humid hide, which he likes to use. This species will not only burrow underground and use the soil I have in here and the thick aspen bedding, the sphagnum moss, but also like to climb quite a bit above ground. So they're a very generalist species as far as habitat and as far as diet. He eats quail, chicks, mice, rats, and he will eat reptilinx. And those were quite small, so I actually think I'm gonna go and get him one more food item. These guys do well if you wanted to set something up for them like a foraging exercise or puzzle feeding. So he's quite versatile in the things that you can do with him as far as a pet snake. The only thing that I don't do with him is allow him to free roam. They're just too quick and darty. They can fit into too many places where they would get lost. They're not what I would consider a medium snake. They're a small snake 
in my opinion. So when he is out of his enclosure, he has to be contained in an exercise tent or an exercise bin, some type of exercise space that he cannot escape from. But he does seem to enjoy exploring and investigating novelty. He will do puzzle feeding. He obviously target trains and he will do foraging exercises. Like if you leave a scent trail somewhere, he'll follow that to a prey item. So they're versatile in the activities that you can do with them. If free roaming your house is something that isn't important to you. I enjoy having some of my snakes free roam my office space and my house. That's very enjoyable for me. This is absolutely not a species that you could do that with at all. So when he is out of his enclosure, he isn't free roaming. He is in an exercise tent or some other contained space where he's safe. He can explore and do other activities that I have set up for him, but he can't just free roam in a room. I feel like he would get lost. As are corn snakes, but sometimes if they suddenly get startled, they will dart off very quickly and become flighty in the spur of the very moment. quickly. And so I don't want to lose him or lose any of my corn snakes, which is why they don't get to free roam. Now he had three hopper mice and now he just had a jumbo mouse. So I'm not giving him anything more, but you can see that he's really excited. He's really aroused right now. And this is a good time for me to probably talk about what arousal means. But arousal is just an elevated physiologic and emotional state. And animals and humans can be in a state of arousal due to fear, due to anxiety, or due to excitement for many reasons. Right now he's highly aroused because he's excited about feeding, about hunting, doing this target training activity. So he's very alert to everything going on in his environment, including my hands. His tail is rattling because he's getting himself worked up and he's in hunting mode. So he's a very interesting snake to work with. And what I would need to do now if I was going to take him out and wanted to do something different with him other than feed him and get him target training is I would need to lower this emotional arousal level and get him calmed down. It's really not as hard to do as it might sound. It just means that I give him a little bit of time to calm down. I take away the stuff that is related to feeding and the things that he associates with feeding, like the target and the feeding tongs and the container I had the mice in. And then I come back with other things, maybe cardboard boxes, maybe a scale, maybe a station. And I just show him that we are doing something now by changing the whole environment and the whole context of our interaction. And then I really don't have any problem with him striking or getting overexcited. I feel that I would be remiss if I didn't do a training session with a corn snake for you. So we're going to do that. And I am turning the flash on for him since it's dark in this room where I have him. And so I will be curious how much that impacts him or not. And I'm using a laundry basket as a shift. And so you can really improvise with these smaller snakes and get creative with the things that you use as shifts. And this is Gary Seven. He arrived here several years ago with another corn snake named Roberta Lincoln. He is an Okiti corn snake. And these two were sent from a breeder that I was working with for the first time. And he seemed reputable. And I think the snakes are wonderful and healthy. However, he was very unscrupulous about the way that he shipped the snakes. And he put them in a box and he put that box inside a FedEx flat pack envelope, walked into a Kinko's FedEx, set it on the counter to be mailed and left. And there was no indication whatsoever that there were live animals in it, completely not a legal way to ship snakes. And then on top of that, FedEx mixed up the label it got mashed or destroyed or something and they they put a different label on it with a different tracking number and long story short they were lost for four days and it was a big very stressful ordeal for me but they eventually arrived here safely and that is roberta lincoln and gary seven so as you can see common household items that even aren't very sturdy like this laundry basket 
work just great for some of these species that are lighter snakes, smaller snakes, very dexterous snakes like corn snakes. He's doing just fine, shifted out onto this laundry basket. And this is probably a very cheap dollar store laundry basket. It's pretty flimsy. It's nothing that would necessarily hold my medium snakes like my Central American boa constrictor or Brettles pythons. I mean, they could crawl on it, but it wouldn't really be a sturdy thing that's gonna hold them very well like it does this corn snake. So another thing I like about corn snakes is they're very adaptable as to the different things that you can use to shift them out onto and let them interact with. And once they're used to you and used to your home and have had a level of training where they're able to generalize the behaviors to different contexts, meaning generalize the targeting, generalize the puzzle feeding, generalize the foraging exercises, it reduces any amount of fear, anxiety, and distress that they have when they are changing environments or learning to use a new shift item like this laundry basket. Most of them adapt very well and do just fine. And just like the Korean rat snake, these corn snakes diet is very generalist. So he isn't really big enough to eat day old chicks yet, but he will eat quail, like day old quail, and he eats both mice and rats and reptilinx. So again, a really versatile generalist species that's pretty easy to care for. I just don't like that I can't let them free roam in my office or my house because they get darty and flighty if they get startled or scared. They can get into the tiniest spaces. They're very, very easy to lose. So they either have to be in an exercise bin or tent. I don't let them free roam. One thing you might notice is that he doesn't eat quite as fast as the Korean rat snake. That's typical. That Korean rat snake eats all sizes of food super quickly. It surprises me every time I feed him how quickly that food is in his mouth, down his throat, and disappeared, and how quickly he's ready to eat again. Whereas the corn snakes do eat much, much more quickly than, say, a python or a boa. However, not quite as quickly as that Korean rat snake. Now, while Gary Seven finishes up, we're going to take a look up here. Above Gary Seven is a snake named Beskar. Beskar came from another rescue. Not much was known about her at all. In fact, it was thought that she was a male, that I had genetic sex determination testing done through Rare Genetics, Inc., as I do with all of my colubrids, and it was determined that Beskar is a female. So we are going to start her out with just a hopper. I'm gonna let her eat that and do some spot cleaning and then I'll finish up with a bigger prey item. So now one level below Beskar, we're back to Gary Seven and I'm gonna give him a second prey item to shift him back in, another hopper mouse. He has a lot better um, inhibitory control than the Korean rat snake. As you can see, he's taking his time. He's not lunging at the target. Part of this may be that he enjoys some time outside of his enclosure and he probably likes climbing on this laundry basket. And so he's not sure he wants to shift back in. Sometimes that will happen when some of them become highly confident and they discover that freedom's very reinforcing and they like being out of their habitat. They sometimes don't always wanna shift back in. I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce him there because he was really um, displaying patience and impulse control and I don't want to push my luck and overdo it. I wanna make sure that I'm reinforcing him, staying focused on that target and following it calmly. So I felt like that that was a good time to reinforce him and it's not gonna be any problem for me to put him back. I can pick him up and put him back if he doesn't shift back using the target. That's not the case with all of my snakes, but with this particular snake, I can pick him up and put him back. So Gary Seven, I left for a few, few seconds to feed my rough scale python and Gary Seven was here on the basket eating his second food reinforcer. And when I came back over here, 
he was putting himself away. So I didn't actually have to do anything. He just basically crawled off the laundry basket and put himself back in his enclosure. So great job, Gary Seven. Thank you so much for being so cooperative for this week's episode of Corn Snake Corral.